All right, welcome back. We are looking at section 4.4, which is coordinate systems. Uh, so we're kicking it off with the unique representation theorem of let B be a basis for a vector space V. Then for each X in our V, there exists a unique set of scalars C1 to Cn such that our solution, X, our, our, um, our vector X in V uh, can be represented by a linear combination of our basis vectors. So why is that? Well, if you suppose that, you know, there's, um, suppose that there's uh, a different representation where you have x uh, is going to be like some linear combination with some d's um, and our basis vectors. Then, if we take the difference of these two, then what do we end up with? We end up with x minus x, which is our zero vector, and that equals c1 minus d1 times b1 plus, and then we do that for all of our, um, all of our terms, all of our, all of our, all of our terms, um, and grouping our, our b's together. And so we end up with cn minus dn uh, times bn vector. And, well, since we know that our basis, this is linearly independent, <clears throat> then um, in order for this to be true, uh, it only can have a trivial solution. So that means that c1 minus d1 needs to be 0, and so on, for all of our... C1, Cn's, and C, uh, Dn's. <clears throat> so that means that C sub J for some um, J in one to N, uh, and I guess we can include these, Cj must equal Dj, and so uh, that means that we have a unique set of scalars. So, uh, definition now, so suppose that we have a basis for V and X is also in V. The coordinates of X relative to our basis uh, are the weights C1 to Cn, uh, which we showed before was unique. So um, this is called a coordinate vector um, when we're looking at a vector made up of the scalars that are the weights for uh, how we can describe X. Uh, and it's our our coordinate vector uh, relative to the basis that we're using. Because depending on your basis, um, you're going to have different, you're going to have uh, a different coordinate vector. Even if you just take like a scalar, like if you have your elementary basis, but then for whatever reason you decide to scale it up by some k, then your coordinates for a particular location in your vector space R2 is going to be different um, depending on what your k is. So uh, it depends on, so the coordinates that you're getting for your coordinate vector have to be tied to the basis that you're using. Let's consider this basis that we're given uh, where we have 1, 0 and 1, 2, so non-standard basis. And suppose that we have this coordinate vector uh, negative 2, 3 uh, with respect to our basis of b1 and b2. So we got to find what our actual x is, and pause the video, think about how you're going to do that. So what we are given here is that negative 2 is c1, and 3 is c2. So we just weight our uh, b1 and b2 with our coordinate vector uh, scalars. So we get, what, negative 2 times 1, 0, plus 3 times 1, 2. And what do we end up with? Negative 2 plus 3 is 1 and 6. So this is going to be x, given this coordinate vector and this basis that we're using. OK, uh, how about this? If we have uh, b1 is 2, 1, b2 is negative 1, 1, and x is 4, 5, and b is our uh, 
basis, or our basis is made up of b1 and b2, how are we going to find the coordinate vector of um, x, rel x relative to b? So pause the video, think about it, try it, and then we'll get, come back. The coordinate vector is the same as finding a c1 and the c2 that satisfy this equation, uh, where we have our basis uh, vectors 2, 1, and negative 1, 1, and they get us to 4, 5. So this looks curiously like if we are doing uh, 2, 1, negative 1, 1 times, what is a C, uh, 1, C, 2 equals 4, 5. And this is something that we've done before. Um, we, we can solve this in any number of ways, and so just pick your favorite. And then you'll end up with uh, C1 is going to be 3, and C2 is going to be 2. And so our coordinate vector is going to be um, three, two. So um, one other thing that we can say is that we could have um, a change of coordinates matrix. So we're going to call that P sub B. And that is uh, going to be made up of our basis uh, vectors in, and ordered. So B1 to Bn. And in order to get our x using our change of coordinates matrix, um, we can do this, where we multiply our uh, change of coordinates matrix by our um, by our coordinate vector. And so if you take your change of coordinates matrix multiplied by your coordinate vector, then you can get out your solution. So um, this would be our PB. This is our uh, x, and this is our um, our coordinate vector. All right. So <clears throat> if we have our basis for our vector space, then our coordinate mapping is a one-to-one -one linear transformation uh, from v onto r. And uh, we're just going to show the linear transformation part, which is just that uh, we have scalar um, multiplication and we have addition that are preserved. Um, you can look at exercise uh, 4.4, 23, and 24 if you're interested in uh, going to looking at the one-to-one -one and the on-to aspects of this. So if you have u, um, which is a vector in v represented like this, and you have W is also in V, and we can represent it by this in V. <clears throat> then uh, we can add these together, right? We can add them up. And so what do we get? U plus W is going to give us, and we can group these, C1 plus D1 times B1 plus dot uh, cn plus dn times bn. And so uh, then we can pull out these uh, coordinate, you can pull out these values to get our coordinate vector um, for u plus w with respect to our basis. And that's going to be our c1 plus d1 to cn plus dn, and uh, we can break this up into c1 to cn, that vector plus d1 to dn, which is our coordinate vector for u with respect to our basis plus our coordinate vector for w with respect to our basis. That's too many bumps in that b. So uh, we have addition that is preserved. It's nice. 
And so for scalar multiplication, what do we need to do? We just need to multiply by some number, uh, so like R or B, some number. So we get uh, R times U, and we can multiply this over um, by our, our linear combination. So we have R times C1, B1, plus, let me scoot over, R times uh, C2. Oh, man, I didn't mean to do this, but it's okay. We committed. Uh, plus uh, R times CM times BM. And so um, we can, once again, we can write this uh, as our uh, coordinate vector R U with respect to uh, basis B. And we get R times C1 dot 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 R times CM. And so we can just pull out that R. So we get C1 to CM. So then we get r times our vec coordinate vector for u with our basis b. So we got uh, closed under scalar multiplication. We got closed under vector addition. So we are good to go for our linear transformation. And if you're interested, look at 4.4.23 and 24 for the um, for how for diving into the one to one and the one to. Uh, look at this. Use coordinate vectors to verify that the polynomials 1 plus 2t squared, <coughs> 4 plus t plus 5t squared, and 3 plus 2t are linearly dependent in P2. So, um, well, how can we translate these polynomials into a um, into something that we can work with with our with our matrices? Well, we can think about if our basis of our polynomial space is uh, our constant terms, our t terms, our t squared terms, and like our t cubed and so on terms. Um, but right now it looks like we only need to squareds. Um, this is our standard basis uh, of our polynomial space. So we can write all of these polynomials as, uh, as vectors uh, because we can have our coordinate mapping. So we have what, one, t, uh, one constant term, no t terms, and two t squared terms. Um, we have four constants, one t and five t squareds, and we have three constants, two t terms and zero t squared terms in each of those polynomials that we had above. So from here, um, well, these are coordinate vectors, and so we can throw them together into, um, into our change of coordinates uh, matrix. And so we, and then in order to figure out if we have linear dependence, um, we just need to show that we have a non-trivial solution to our um, to our our system of equations. So uh, we can do that by just throwing these together of 0, 1, 2, 4, 1, 5, and 3, 2, 0. Augment it with a column of zeros and do some row reduction. So then if we end up with a row of all zeros, that means that we have a non-trivial solution, and that means that we have linear dependence. And so if you go through and do this, then you'll get, um, let's see, 1, 4, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, and a row of zeros. And so we have a linear dependence for our columns of this matrix uh, that is our change of coordinates matrix. And so we have, um, we can, we can get, uh, we can use a linear combination of uh, two of our, two of our polynomials that we have, um, and we can get another one of our polynomials. So. Uh, what you can do is that if you had um, like 3 plus 2t um, and uh, 4 plus 
plus t plus 5t squared. So this is equal to 2 times this um, minus 5 times this. All right, so if we just go through and do that, then we get what? We get uh, 8 minus 5 is 3, and then 2t plus 10t squared minus 10t squared. So we can get uh, we can get our third polynomial using a linear combination of our first two polynomials. So we have linear dependence. Vectors v1 and v2, and we also have vector x, and b is a basis with v1 and v2. Then b is going to be a basis for our span uh, of v1 and v2, which is h. we got to figure out if x is an h. So if it is, then we need to find our coordinate vector of x relative to our basis. So if we, if, uh, if x is an h, then we need to have some uh, scalar such that this, uh, we need scalars, scalars C1 and C2, such that this works. And how do you figure that out? Well, you can just put it into uh, augmented matrix and solve it. Uh, so, so we have 3, 6, 2, 1, 9, 0, 1, 7. So do some row reduction, and what do you end up with? 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 3, and a row of zeros. And so uh, this means that we have C1 is 2 and C2 is uh, 3, and that will give us our coordinate um, matrix for x with our basis B is 2, 3. Um, so x is an H, and... Um, so, and we found our coordinate vector. Cool. So, uh, what did we go over? Well, we had uh, polynomials that we can have a uh, basis for. We had uh, that our basis uh, is, the coordinate mapping with our basis uh, is going to be a one-to-one -one linear transformation. We have uh, we had got some vocabulary of our change of basis, or our um, change of coordinates matrix um, using the basis that we have. We can uh, find a coordinate, uh, and given the coordinate vector, we can find what the actual vector is. And uh, we have a unique uh, set of scalars that, given a basis, can get us to a x value. Uh, uh, um, a vector. Alright, so that's about it. Bye.